Our topic today is captioned, How to Find a Godly Marriage Partner. Proverbs 18.22 says, Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor from the Lord. A careful study of the Bible reveals that human history began with marriage and ends with marriage. Genesis 2 and then Revelation 19 makes this very clear. Therefore, God holds the subject of marriage very, very importantly. Next to salvation, marital decision is the most important decision any man will ever make. It holds the potential of either making you joyful or otherwise. It holds the potential of making you fulfilled in life or otherwise. Finding a godly spouse is far beyond beauty or handsomeness. It is far beyond smartness or intelligence. It is far beyond physical or material possessions. It is something that is very, very important and must be taken so. The word find simply means to discover after a deliberate search. It means to succeed in obtaining something. Therefore, a search is required. In other words, you have to be in active partnership with God in this adventure if you must find a godly marriage partner. For example, if you need a job, you pray, yes, but after prayer, you don't just sit down and keep waiting and watching. You get your CV in order. You take your CV to relevant places. You probably have to go for an interview, among other things. Therefore, you are taking steps in the direction of your desire. Another example, if you want to go for a weight loss, you don't just sit down there and be watching. You take steps. For example, you watch the kind of food you eat. You get yourself involved in relevant exercises. You might even have to visit a professional to get advice. By so doing, you are taking practical steps in the direction of the desires of your heart. You are doing something to produce your desired result. It is the same thing in finding a godly marriage partner. If you desire a godly marriage partner, there is what to do. With your lifestyle, you position yourself with dignity and class to show that you are ready for marriage. And when you do so, God comes in to offer you the necessary support. What must I do therefore? You may ask to find a godly marriage partner. I will share a few thoughts with you at this moment. Number one, establish a solid foundation for your life. Psalms chapter 11 verse 3 makes it clear. If the foundations be faulty, what can the righteous do? So to find a godly married partner begins with you being godly. Salvation is the foundation for all round success, including marriage. You must establish a quality relationship with God. Commit to your spiritual growth. Read and meditate on the word of God consistently. Colossians 3.16a tells us, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. You must make Jesus Christ your first love and then you'll be ready for a marital experience that will reflect his glory. Be baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Read and study Christian books for your growth and books and materials on marriage. Focus on God and the right person will locate you in due course. It's the same thing the other way around. If you claim that you have found someone to marry, how godly is that person? Remember, it is said very clearly that birds of the same feather flock together. A godly spouse is one that loves God more than anyone else, including himself or herself and including you. Find out his or her salvation status. 
2 Corinthians 6 14 makes it clear be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers or what part had he that believeth with an infidel where is he or she with Jesus Christ does he or she have interest in spiritual things is he or she a growing Christian that individual is he or she committed to a local church does he or she study the word of God and praise Remember, Proverbs 27, 17 makes it very clear. Iron sharpeneth iron. To find a godly spouse, you have to be godly. And I can share my own personal experience with you. One of the important factors that attracted me to my husband before we got married was his spiritual stand for God. His spiritual fervency for God. Everybody knew him and he stand for Jesus Christ that he would never compromise his faith for anything. You can do the same thing. As you do so, God will direct you in the right direction. Number two, be productively engaged in life. And this is very, very important. Whatever your hand finds doing, the Bible says, do it with all your might. Find your purpose in life and pursue it passionately and do it productively. And I can guarantee you, you have a 100% chance of success in marriage if you walk in God's plan for your life. The truth is, if you are going nowhere, you can't have a fellow traveler. You must have a career. What is your vision, your calling, your assignment? Develop yourself while you are waiting. Self-development will make you an asset and not a liability. Of course, don't be too hard or feel desperate or feel depressed because you haven't found a godly marriage spouse. If you have nothing, you can share nothing. So build yourself spiritually, build a career, build yourself mentally, read books, pray, attend seminars, volunteer, Go to school. By all means, engage productively. Explore better options to becoming a better version of yourself. Pursue the desire that God has put in your heart naturally. In other words, put your life in order. Remember, Ada had the assignment to dress and to keep the garden before he got into marriage. Of course, Genesis 2.15 tells us, And the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Be involved productively in something in life. For you ladies, a man comes to you and tells you, Oh, you are the star in my family. Thank God for that. Ask him, Sir, what do you do for a living? If he tells you, for example, Oh, I'm a contractor. It's very important for you to ask him, what are the jobs he had done before? Except you might be the contract that he's actually talking about at the end of the day. And for you men, you find a, a lady that is so lazy, why single? Then you need to watch it. Because if she's lazy, why single? When she gets married and begins to have children, you might have a serious task at hand. This is very important. Number three, set your desires and pray about them. Psalms 37, 4 makes it clear. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of your heart. Some people don't even know the kind of marriage they want or the type of spouse they desire. Hence, anything goes. Some will even tell you, oh, I've been waiting for a long time. I can't afford to wait anymore. Anyone that comes my way goes. No. The scripture says, God will give you your heart desire. God's son, Bishop Oedipo, has said over and again, no one arrives at a future that he cannot see. Your mind is the gateway and the center to your life. If you desire certain attributes, talent, gift, calling, ministry in your spouse, then prayerfully seek it. God honors the desires of your heart. Abraham's servant, for example, while looking for a wife for Isaac, already had his specifications in mind, but he also prayed towards it. Genesis 24, 
He asked God for good speed and kindness to his master. So don't be ruled by the physical only, but let the inner virtues guide you. Look for someone who loves God, who loves you and respects you. Look for someone who shares the same values and beliefs with you. Two people with a common interest easily flow together. So prepare yourself in prayer. The spiritual controls the physical. Start praying for your marriage early enough, even before you are ready to be married. Pray for every aspect. Nothing is too small or too big to pray about. And ladies, if a man does not fall on his knees to pray to God, he doesn't deserve to fall on one knee with a ring in his hand before you. It wouldn't work. A word is enough for the wise. Number four, and very importantly, be active in kingdom service. Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these other things shall be added unto you. Being actively involved in serving God is one sure way to find a godly marriage partner. But as you serve, focus on God, not on looking for a spouse. Don't go to a particular service group, either ushery or protocol or whatever, because you are looking for a marriage partner. The great man of God, Reverend Kenneth E. Hagin Sr., shared how that in Rema, people and students came to attend the Bible school, but in the process, many of them end up finding their marriage spouses there. It works like that. They didn't go there with the intention of looking for a married partner, but at the end of the day, they found there. So it's very important that as you serve God, focus on Him, not on your name. Service can be in pursuing your God-given purpose or kingdom advancement and divorce. My husband, for example, found me on his way for a preaching engagement. Serving God comes with blessings, which include supernatural marital settlement. The great man of God, Billy Graham, and his wife, Ruth, had a great marriage of over 63 years. And the moment they met, the husband said he fell in love with her. And great was their experience in marriage. Your own testimony shall be greater in the name of Jesus Christ. Boaz found Ruth in service. Ruth chapter 2. Rebecca was found in service. Genesis chapter 24. Many people through testimonies shared have ministered during outreaches to their spouses unknown to them. Some time ago, a sister invited someone for a marital settlement service in church and supernaturally both herself and her invitee got connected to their God-ordained spouses within 24 hours. God works miracles today. I pray for everyone believing God for a godly marriage partner right now. Whatever your situation might be or your negative past experiences, I decree good speed for you today. Number five, maintain godly standards. As a Christian, there is a way you should behave. Don't compromise your stand and your faith so as not to miss God's best for you. And very importantly, don't force a relationship for two cannot work together except they be agreed. You mostly attract your kind, so love yourself. Be at the right place at the right time because you cannot be looking for a godly partner in an ungodly setting. Be among your kind. Develop character. Develop competence. Build yourself up. Allow good communication and God will order your steps. Your money management system, work on it. Your attitude and behavior becomes very important. If anyone is speaking to you or talking to you about marriage, look at all of these attributes also in their lives. Is he or she selfish? Does he or she have issues with anger? You will know them by their fruits. Matthew 7, 16. And very importantly, don't 
ever get married outside the church. Everyone has standards, their likes, dislikes, and preferences. Compromising your standard means going for a partner even though you don't agree with how they live, behave, or look with the aim that you will be able to change them after. Some people compromise their standards because they want to be accepted. That is people pleasing. Don't get involved. Ensure that you keep yourself pure. Hebrews 13, 4. Sex before marriage, I must tell you, will blind you to the truth. Many have been deceived. You shall not be deceived. Package yourself properly. And let me say this also, your appearance matters a lot. Truly attractive package sells a product. The way you appear is the first impression you create in people's minds. So dress the way you want to be addressed. Wear clothes that portray the godliness in you. Don't be shabby or messy. Dress neatly and moderately. But I must warn you, the cause, the shape, the look of that individual, the way it is now, will not always be as it is forever. Changes will come with growth in life. I also share with people jokingly that the way I look right now is not the way I looked when I was not married. If you saw my picture then, you will know that the difference is there. However, work on yourself and give no room to the devil. I have people share jokingly you want to marry a lady look at how her mother is right now most likely that's the way she will look at that age you want to marry a young man look at the way his father is right now most likely that's the way he will look when he is that age so allow god to guide you finally radiate the joy of christ and be hospitable the joy of Jesus Christ radiating inside you makes you to be attractive. Don't be anxious. Possess a sense of humor. Be excited. Be joyful. The truth is when you wear a long face, you prolong your waiting period. Joy attracts good things, including marriage. Resist every form of depression. Because, of course, no one wants to get married to a depressed person. Depression makes you unapproachable. So cultivate an attitude of gratitude. Always be grateful for your current situation. This is the fastest way to open your marital door. I can tell you very clearly, one of the things also that attracted me to my husband before we got married is the fact that he has always been a man of humor. You cannot be around him and not laugh and smile and be excited. So, make and keep godly friends. Treat others how you want to be treated. Sarah and Abraham, for example, entertained angels unaware by being hospitable. The widow of Zarephath accommodated a prophet without knowing. Rahab was preserved and had a change of story from being a harlot to being in the lineage of Jesus because of her hospitality. Learn to treat people with respect, dignity, love, and honor. Many people have found their God or their spouse through this means. Therefore, be approachable. Don't despise anybody. Learn how to relate well with people. Be courteous and friendly. Let go of pride. Great things can come in the simplest form. The right person might not come in the package you expect. Don't let go of quality for quantity. In conclusion, it's important that you ensure you are divinely guided. In Genesis 2.23, when Eve was brought to Adam, Adam recognized her immediately. So when you find your God-ordained spouse, there is something within you that will give you that witness. Grace, therefore, in the name of Jesus Christ, for you to be able to locate your God-ordained spouse, receive it in Jesus' name. I pray for you today that the God of heaven that guided my steps in locating a godly man 
in marriage and that is making my marriage to be joyful and fruitful today, that same God will help you. You will not make mistakes. You will not regret in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember, a God-centered marriage is always worth the wait. Marital delay, I come against you in the name of Jesus Christ in the life of every listener right now. Be helped by God in Jesus' name. I await your testimony because I know God will order your steps. Are you born again? If not, pray this prayer with me right now from your heart. Oh God, I'm a sinner. I repent of my sins today. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. From today, I am born again in Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that prayer with me from your heart, congratulations. You are now born again. Log on to the website address at the bottom of your screen and fill the salvation form right now. Send your testimonies also through this medium and connect through the social media handles at the bottom of your screen. And always remember, God is too faithful to fail. See you next time.